Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to visit a pen that I bought a while ago on eBay um, during my let's try a pen that I never heard of that may be from a um, well-known pen maker. And let's see what it writes like, how it's made, why it was made for the time frame it was made in. So here's the eBay auction. The price was hard to um, not bid on it. And it is a diplomat. This is their logo before they went with their kind of like uh, flower design. But one of the things that made the purchase even more rewarding was the excellent seller, Yesterday's Fountain Pens. They sent me this card, which has a nib attached to it, which I have to admit is very nice, unexpected. It was extremely well packaged, nice notes inside. So if you're into vintage and... Uh, you want to experiment on eBay, I certainly feel that they will provide you with excellent service. But today's subject is the Diplomat 45. So we open it up and those of you that follow fountain pen history will probably respond to this design. You have your Lust Alloy cap or brush stainless with some chrome accents. You know, the logos in the finial at the top of the cap, you know, pressed in plastic. And that's how the cap is attached to the metal. The clip is attached to the metal cap. It does unscrew. So that is probably 50-50 of the pens of this ear. And gee whiz. It's a PM pen. Not exactly certain um, what that stands for. Uh, if we look at the nib, it appears to be like a two-tone nib, so that's interesting. It's semi-hooded. A uh, decent amount of tipping material on it. This pen arrived with an interesting arrangement for the filling mechanism. It's a cartridge filler. And this is a metal section which allows you to keep a spare cartridge and also have one that's used for writing. I cleaned it up. These cartridges had a little bit of ink in it, but the pen probably was only used for these two cartridges and that was it. These are not standard cartridges. I'd say they're proprietary. You know, here's a Pelican cartridge. Here's an international standard, which uh, most of the Chinese pens come with. Here's Mont Blanc, which is also, whoop, here's Mont Blanc, which is also international standard. And the basic thing, you can see the opening on the Diplomat is larger. And also they have this narrow section, which is quite long. So nothing is really going to work in this pen other than these cartridges. You know, here's your international converter. And as you can see, it's not going to fit into the top of the section because it only has a, a small nib on it where this one has a larger nib. So that's the pen. We're going to, I'm going to use a syringe to fill one of these cartridges with some ink. I think the pen is nice as a pen representative of the 60s. I think it's very typical, injection molded plastic. Um, certain it's a steel nib with some plating on it. The cap is nice. The pen is lightweight. It came with instructions in German. I'm not going to translate them for you. So that's it. So let's ink it up and see how it writes. Also included this six pack of cartridges, which look pretty new. I guess that's uh, 
1.4 euros there. Not really certain if how vintage these cartridges might be, but I don't see an ink in them. <laughs> you know, in my experience with cartridges, they tend to run out of ink relatively quickly. They don't seem to seal. So even though these cartridges look kind of nice, uh, they're not going to be very useful for this particular pen. So I'm going to fill up those cartridges that I got and keep these for some future use. But it was nice that the seller included them. Of, uh, the Diplomat 45 with the Jinhao 992, a Nemocene Singularity, and a Twisby Eco. It is the smallest pen of this group which I think is typical of the size of the pen in the uh, early 60s. So if we look at them posted, uh, the 45 definitely equates to the 992 and the, and the Nemo scene as far as overall length goes. The section's a little bit on the small side and it tapers down so there's no lip at the end uh, like these other pens have. The Nemo scene definitely has the more impressive nib of this group. So you got a $30 pen, a $20 pen, a $2 pen, and this cost me $16. So I don't know what this cost when it was new in the 60s. My guess would be around $12 or $15, somewhat similar to what I paid for it. Of the business end of the pens, uh, this couldn't be a more eclectic group. Obviously, the clear, transparent section of the Twisby and the 992 show off that ink very, very nicely. But, you know, one has to be impressed with that nib on the Nemo scene, and it does write extreme. All these pens write extremely well. Well, three of these pens write extremely well. We'll look at the Diplomat now on paper. Is obviously, if it performs the function it was designed for, sold for, and you bought it for. I think this unscrew cap is fine. You feel the threads, but there's a lot of texture in the grip section, which I'm not a fan of, but I don't dislike it. It'll fit okay in the hand unposted. It posts deeply. This is a very light pen. We'll give you those weights. So I definitely would write with this posted. So let's take a look at how it writes. It writes fine. Certainly it's not going to have me run out to buy all the 45s I can find on eBay. With a little bit of pressure, it, it writes very well, which I find with um, the other diplomats that I have too. They definitely design a good nib and feed. I'm um, not a fan of cartridges, but this one seems to be working okay. Um, I think this ink is all right. It doesn't float my boat. But one of the things I realized about this nib when I was playing around with it is uh, the cross strokes are really nice. No pressure on the downstrokes. If you add more pressure, the nib will open up, but the feed doesn't keep up. Which is a shame because that would add another dimension to this nib. I mean, it picks up right away and you can write fast without a problem. Um, I think this is a typical nib of the 60s. Uh, when I was growing up, that's when I started buying fountain pens, and I bought cheap fountain pens. And this is typical of that type of fountain pen, even though it's made by Diplomat, which I would not consider a low-end pen manufacturer, but they have to compete in a marketplace like everybody else. They have to do a certain volume to um, you know, stay in business. And I'm certain this pen competed well in the market that it was placed in, in in the 60s. And I have other 60s pens to review, Conway Stewart's, and uh, I think you know, there's a common theme, at least from my perception, because the 60s is, like I said, when I first started writing. So I have a first-time experience with it, and anything prior to that is, is vintage in my mind, because obviously it was before I was involved with fountain pens. 
So hopefully you've enjoyed this little look at a pen you may never have heard of and may never hear of again. Uh, I'm glad I picked it up because I just enjoy looking at the way pens are made and, and positioned and marketed. And so from that viewpoint, I like it. And it was a relatively inexpensive purchase. So I have money to buy other inexpensive pens with. So may you have many great writing experiences. May you explore the varieties of pens, inks, paper. And as we can see, it doesn't like to be spread. So, bye.